Hi, it's Mr. Anderson, and in this podcast, I'm going to be talking about plant control. So if we were talking about animals, we'd be talking about the brain, the nervous system, muscles, sensory system, how we respond to our environment. But, it, but plants don't have any of those things. And so how are they able to do things like this? Mealworm is placed on a, a Venus flytrap, and it closes quickly, digesting it eventually. Um, so we're not quite sure, but basically we think there's some active transport going on that's pumping water down here to the end, swelling up those cells and then closing in on it. Um, there's a misconception where a lot of kids think that somehow they are eating this. They don't do photosynthesis. Nah. Uh, Venus flytrap live in an area where there's not a lot of nitrogen in the soil. It's kind of a swampy area. And so they're still doing photosynthesis, but they're eating these bugs just to get nitrogen that's not really available in the soil. And so... If they don't have nervous system, if they don't have muscles, basically what they're using is similar to our endocrine system. They're basically sending out hormones. Those hormones are diffusing around the plant, and then they're going to have different consequences depending on what cells are picking it up and different actions depending on what hormone is sent. And so the five that we're going to learn are going to be auxin, cytokinins, gibberellins, abscisic acid, and then finally ethylene. And so there are a lot, a lot of other hormones that are out there, but basically these are five ones that are found in a number of different plants. And so um, it's a good place to start. So let's start with auxin. It's really one of the first ones that was ever studied. And so if you put a plant next to the window and just let it sit there for a long time, what you'll find is that plant is going to start to orient itself towards the sun. And you can see all of these leaves are pointing towards the sun, and they're also going to move throughout the day. And so how do they do that? Well, one of the first scientists ever to, to do any work on auxin was uh, Charles Darwin and his son. And basically what we found out is that auxin is a chemical. And basically what auxin will do is auxin is going to move to the shady side of a stem. And so if we've got auxin here, auxin is going to migrate to the other side. Let's say that the sun was now on the other side, then the auxin is moved back to this side. But basically what the auxin does is it's going to loosen up the cellulose in the cell wall. And as we loosen it up, it's basically going to make those cells a little bit bigger. And so I couldn't quite do this in the animation, but if you think about it, if the auxin were to move to this side of my finger and make that side of my finger longer, it's going to bend in that direction. Likewise, if it were to move to this near side or my palm side of my hand, it's going to bend it in the other direction. And so basically, depending on where the auxin goes, it's going to make the cells grow faster there, and it's going to make it bend in the opposite direction. Likewise, if auxin moves up to the top, it's going to make it go farther and farther. It's going to grow straight up. And so it's a great way for them to know which way the light is. Auxin's also going to affect the roots. It's basically what's going to happen is auxin's going to move against gravity. And if you think about that, how's that going to play out in the roots? Well, let's say that we have a root. Let's say we tip our, our plant on its side, and now we have a root that looks like this, and we've got a little root cap on it like that. Well, gravity's going to be pulling us down like this. And so auxin's going to move towards the top. So auxin's going to move up here. Well, what's that going to do? It's going to cause the root to grow more on this side, and that's going to cause the root to bend down. So it's going to go like that. Uh, and so it's basically auxin's a great for, way for us to respond to our environment. Next one is going to be something called cytokinins. Cytokinins, if you break down the word, it's really easy to figure out this one. It's basically cytokinesis. So we're taking one cell, and we're dividing it in two cells. And so um, when does this happen? Well, if you think about it, a plant is going to grow in two different directions. There's going to be a plant that's going to grow up like this. And so we have this is going to be moving up. But there's also going to be lateral growth. So it's going to be movement in this direction. And so if, we, if we're moving in that direction, we can't just expand our cells. We're actually going to have to make new cells. And cytokinin is responsible for that. It's basically a hormone that causes our cells to divide. And that's going to cause us to grow uh, to the side. And so if you think about it, we can respond to light that way. And so let's say that we have sun up here. So here's our sun again, smiling away. And let's say that there's nothing in the way. Well, then a plant is going to secrete a lot of auxin, so it can grow right up towards the sun. But let's say that we put something in the way. Let's say we put a barrier here so the light can't get through. Well, now a plant is going to increase the amount of cytokinins. That's going to cause more lateral growth, and so it can grow around like that. Once we get pure light again, then we're going to use auxin to grow right up towards it. And so that's, I mean, if you look at a forest, basic, basically everything in the forest is in competition with itself, trying to uh, get the most light. This is a cool little study here. Basically what they did is they applied 
nothing to this plant, a control, and then they applied a lot of cytokinins to this one. And you can see, even though they're the same age, this one is growing up laterally, and this one's quite, it's dividing. Next thing we have is the gibberellins. Gibberellins actually comes from an old story. Uh, and basically, we had rice, and rice was growing in uh, rice uh, fields or rice paddies. And a fungus infected it. It's called gibberellic, I can't remember, it's a Japanese term, I'm not sure of the, the species name, but basically what it did is it caused the rice to grow incredibly fast and then fall over and then die. And so basically they called it foolish seedling because all the rice would grow as quickly as it could, couldn't support its own weight, and then it would fold over on itself. And basically what we found is it was causing those plants to increase gibberellins, which is a natural plant hormone. And basically what's that used to do is to control the, the yearly cycles of the plant. It tells them when it's time to become dormant, when to flower. Um, humans have started using gibberellins because we can cause um, seedless grapes to actually grow really, really quickly just by spreading it on them. Next one is abscisic acid. Abscisic acid, I always remember that as like the scissors, like a garden scissors. Basically what abscisic acid is going to do is it's going to do the opposite of what gibberellins are doing. And so in the fall, when our amount of daylight starts to drop off, at least here in Montana, then the trees are going to turn colors. And so how does the plant know when to do that? Well, they're looking at the quality of the light and the amount of light that they get. But basically what that Abscisic acid is saying it's time to cut off those leaves and basically it causes them to fall. It causes them to suppress this fruit formation. It causes them to stop transpiration. And so I think of abscisic acid as basically a hormone that's causing everything to slow down and enter into dormancy. And then the last one I want to talk about is ethylene. Ethylene, unlike the other ones, is actually a gas that's going to go outside of the parts of the plant. And so this is used in a positive feedback loop. And, and you've probably noticed that all the fruits on a tree will all ripen at the same exact point. And so basically what happens is if you get fruit that starts to ripen, so these apples right here, ripening fruit will start to give off ethylene, this gas. That ethylene will spread to all the fruits around it, causing them to give off more ethylene and more ethylene, and pretty soon all of them have started to go, uh, to, to become ripened at the same time. And this is super smart, because you can attract things like birds and humans so they can eat the fruit and transfer the seeds somewhere else. And so again, positive feedback loop. And ethylene we find in different, uh, different plants as well. So you could take a really moldy banana, put it right next to some uh, apples, and they're going to go moldy quickly as well. And so basically, those are hormones. It's how plants control and respond to their environment. And I hope that's helpful.